guys, welcome back to our channel. It's been a, a little been while. A while since we posted our last video, we're so sorry. Um, things have been a bit busy and crazy. Um, later you guys will find out why. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been an intense past couple of weeks. Full of weddings that we went to and yeah, different things that happen in our lives. Um, also full of um, planning our trip to Nigeria. We'll yeah. be doing that very soon and um, yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. Once we have some more information, we'll let you know how that's going. Yeah. Right now, not so easy, but yeah, we hope everything everything comes together. Yeah, I'm really excited, totally excited for the Nigerian trip. Yeah. And of course, you're going to vlog. Of yeah. course, you're going to see all about the trip afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that before <laughs> but yeah yeah cool. so today we're going to continue with our series uh we started the series we started a series called marriage life and uh the first episode was um what was the first episode um seeing potential yep seeing potential in your partner and your friend in whoever is close to you but most importantly in your spouse because the, the series is about marriage life yep so um, today we'll be talking about another, or, or we'll be doing another episode of Marriage Life, and the title of the episode is. It's going to be conflict and. Conflict in cross-cultural marriages. Exactly. It's a very very special topic to us because we are. <laughs> Dangerous. We are cross. <laughs> we are cross-cultural. Cross in case you haven't noticed, uh, and uh, we're also married. <laughs> so, um, today we'll be talking about conflicts and how to handle them, especially in a cross-cultural marriage. We know that conflict is not only unique to cross-cultural marriages, but um, our focus today will be on, on a cross-cultural marriage because we are, you know, like I said, cross-cultural. Yeah. Yeah, we, I think we're going to start with this little intro because we, um, or like a little thing that we want to share that we recognize that a lot of people or some friend of ours or friends that we have close to us um we talked about the topic about you know would it, how it would be for him if his daughters would get married and he was like yeah i mean i'm excited for them if they get married but i don't know if i really want them to get married to an african or like a totally different culture and then we started discussing and we started to discuss about, you know, why and why he thinks that is an issue and things like this. So it was kind of interesting because, I mean, he's close and he's a really nice guy. It's not like he's racist. Um, you could feel his heart. He's not racist. It's just that he, um, he has that certain, you know, perspective or that s certain um, view about you know cross culture marriages that it's really really hard and it really really creates a lot of conflicts which is funny because we don't really feel the same way um, I think we gained out of relationship a lot like it, we it's a lot of positive things that we learned that we wouldn't have maybe because wouldn't have if it would have been with another normal not normal but with me for example another German or another Swedish person I wouldn't have learned that much um, yeah so yeah we started to talk about it. and um, yeah what do you do you have something um, so because <laughs> he he's good at discussions and he discussed it um, and talked about it about his view um, and I mean my parents even had the same background and the same way of talking when they were like young when I was younger they would say yeah please don't get married to you know an African and I was like why it's like yeah because you know they're strong-willed and <laughs> they know what they want and you know and all these kind of I don't know stereotypes. stereotypes that everybody has um but for me I didn't I don't know I was never scared about it like I never really thought about that I would get married to Nigerian 
it could have been that I could have got, got married to Asian. It was his character and his way of, like, his personality that actually makes me want to marry him. Um, so that's the, that's the thing we, we're trying to address, that um, although in you know, cross-cultural marriages it is between two different cultures, but it's still uh, between two different personalities. Yeah. So, um, of course, you have to put into consideration the cultures, but even when you, even when, even when you see a marriage between the same cultures, it is still between two people from diff that, that have different personalities. And so... Um, the culture affects the personality. The culture affects the personalities, but still you have people that don't really act like, the like they are stereotypical or like the stereotypical view of how their culture should look like. Yeah. Because they have a different personality. And um, like I said at the beginning, um, you're going to find co conflicts between, between the same cultures as you're going to find conflicts in different cultures because like I said, two different personalities. And if you come into a cross-cultural marriage or a same culture marriage um, with a perspective that your point of view is correct and there is no mistake mm -hmm. in it, that's it's gonna important. fail. Your marriage is gonna fail. Your your relationship yeah. is gonna fail, whether it's cross cultural or same culture. Yeah. You know. So for me, although I'm African, I also have my personality. Um, I can be very introverted in a lot of things, yeah. and um, and that's personality wise. That's not culture wise. But where my culture comes in is that when there is a conflict, I have a tendency to believe that I'm right just because I'm the man. So, like, it's there. There's a tendency. And I don't think it, it only applies to the African culture. I know there's a, we have a lot of other cultures where the men insist that they're right just because they're the men. Mm. The same with me. Yeah. Like, so, for, I, for the woman. For me, it is, I, I am quite extroverted. So, for me, I had to learn really fast to not, you know, to be different, to handle conflicts differently. Because out of like out of my personality, I wanted to talk immediately. I want to discuss things immediately from what I learned from my parents and my family, um, which I, fa I fastly learned that it's not the best time. Sometimes the best time is to sleep over, or the best thing to do is to sleep over it, and then the next morning to talk about it and um, to mention it. What about um, the the feminist and part? And then yeah. I'm coming to that, and I think, um, um, yeah, that is that's one part. That's my my personality, and then of course the part of I don't want to submit to my husband. Out of that feminism side, came into it as well. Like my culture side from the Swedish part, the German part of controlling that I'm always right. I want to control our relationship. I want to control and do things a lot on my own. But also, I I can do it. Like I don't need my husband to do things. I don't need to, you know, be underneath him or submit. But actually, submission um, doesn't necessarily mean to say yes to everything. Um, and that's also something that we're gonna talk about. Yeah. In and, um, the more Christian way. Yeah. And um, yeah. Like I said, coming into any kind of relationship, whether cross-cultural or same culture, we both have to be willing to learn from each other. Yeah. We both have to be willing to admit that there are some things in our cultures that are not right. Yeah. But um, I can't come into the marriage and she can't come into the marriage thinking that, we, that are right. we are both either right or we are both completely wrong. Mm. And so there is something that we can gain from each other. So. It takes a heart that is teachable and a humble heart and a heart that is willing to compromise a lot for any kind of marriage to succeed, whether the same culture or cross-cultural. So we're trying to eliminate this fear that your marriage has to suffer just because it's a different culture. Yeah, exactly. And cross-cultural cross marriage is not for everyone. Yeah. And so is same culture marriage. Some people, like my wife, do better with, with a different culture than with their culture. And some people handle their culture better than other cultures. So it's not really about 
you know, whether everybody should get married cross-culturally or everybody should marry, marry the same culture. Yeah. We're trying to eliminate this fear behind the reason why white people get married to a certain kind of people or a certain group of people. Yeah. First of all, the most important thing is who you're marrying, not the culture you're marrying. Is the first true? thing is the yeah. person. How does the person treat you? How, how does the person relate to you? Mm. How is the person, how's the person's character? Now after that, you can consider the culture behind it. Because like I said, there, there is a stereotype about how Germans behave and how Africans or how, how Europeans behave and how Africans behave. Okay? And in these stereotypes, there is an element of truth in it. It's not completely true, yeah. but there is some truth that has been exaggerated. Yeah. And it has been blown out of proportion. And so because the news or the media only picks bad things and, not, and, and, and do not report good things, we tend to only hear about this negative part because that's the only thing that people discuss about. Mm. But we both have or we know people from different cultures that got married and are still together way longer than people that got married and are, for, and are, and are from the same culture. Mm. And that's where, we, that's where we're coming from. That whether you're from the same culture or different cultures, especially different cultures, you have to come to that marriage with a perspective to learn from each other. Yeah. I don't know what to add to that. <laughs> you mostly said everything. Um, how do we handle conflicts personally, individually? Like, like how do we... We personally um, handle conflicts differently. Depends on how the day is and depends on how we feel. Most of all, we... Like, we both had to learn to um, to understand one another. I think that's the first thing. We had to understand one another. Where are you coming from? Trying to get into their position, into their situation. Trying to understand them from their point of view. And not from your point of view. And that is, I think, something that is really important. And if you learn that, you learn... You learn a lot in your life because if you learn that you can, you have, will, you will find it easier to understand people in your working place, people outside of your home. Um, it will be easier for you to deal with conflicts. But I think that's the first thing that that I had to learn, um, and then to listen to how the conversation is going. So if you just feel like you're talking over and over and over and over the same thing and you're not coming to a point or a solution then cut it and say okay we're just going to cut it here and we're going to talk about it tomorrow because you're not getting to a point you're just getting more frustrated more angrier more yeah. um depressed because and it's, and you know it's, it's you not about like, winning the argument exactly yeah. it's about like what we learned is it's about coming to middle point coming to solution that works for both of us not just for me, not just for him, but that works for both of us and that we both can handle it. Um, I think that's something that is really important that we learned. Um, and what also helps us is that we are believers. And so although we have two different cultures, there is one culture that, that, that pulls us together. Yeah. And that is kingdom culture. Yes. That is our, that is our faith culture. Yeah. So when we feel like things are going wrong in both of our cultures, we have one culture to go to and say, hey, for example, we say, God, what are you saying about this? Or Jesus, speak to us. What do we do about this? Yeah. And so we are listening constantly for how we can imp improve based on our relationship with God. Yeah. And for some of you that are not Christians or believers, um, it will play out differently because you will have to choose to submit or learn not just the man to the woman and not just the man to the to the i mean not just the man to the woman or the other way around like both of you will have to learn to submit to each other at different times yeah. and you have to learn that loving each other is not just about the romantic and the fuzzy and the and the cushy Unicorn cushy feelings world kind of stuff that's where the sacrifice comes in yeah. where you have to compromise yeah and despite how you feel, you have to put the other person's need above, above yours. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to feel good at that time. But like the, the willingness to learn and to say I'm sorry, very important phrase, I'm sorry, when it comes to conflict. Even though sometimes you don't feel like you're wrong. Like me, I, I find it very difficult to say I'm sorry. And I'm learning more and more to say I'm sorry. She's very good at saying I'm sorry. 
but it needs to come from both of us. Like we need to learn that. I'm sorry is a very good phrase that is needed for any marriage. While I was growing up, I, I, I had to use the phrase I'm sorry and I was forced to use it. And so I had a bad experience with that phrase and that I also took that into my marriage where I didn't even want to say I'm sorry for anything. Because it had a, I had a bad experience with it, the but I had to learn, thing, yeah. I had to learn afresh. The same thing about me discussing about things and getting maybe a little bit more intense in the discussion. I always tend to get emotional. I mean, I'm better at it and I'm really working on it, but I get really, really emotional because of my background and because of how I grew up. It was like there would be discussions just like... You know, we were on our way to church and from the house store out to the car, that's when this discussion exploded. It is. It got really emotional sometimes and it was just like so much and I had that so much in my, in my childhood that it was hard for me to discuss and to have a normal conversation or a normal conflict um, about things and to not get emotional was really hard for me. And like, I, yeah, that's something that we learned. And you learn that by going forward and by growing as a person and as a couple. Um, you learn things like um, praying to God. Like, for example, it was a really cool thing that my husband said the other day. He was like, submission, um, how do you say that? He said, submitting to your husband doesn't necessarily mean saying yes all the time. It actually means bowing down, letting God punch your husband <laughs> so it, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a saying I, I don't know where I got the saying from I think somebody else said it and I took it um, but yeah like she said submission is not really um, <clears throat> being a slave to your husband or whatever yeah. when God's told the wife submit to your to your husband it doesn't really mean that your your needs are lesser than his or you you have less value than him yeah it's um, if somebody made a uh, a phrase out of it, or like a, it's almost like a funny um, suggestion. That submission is you ducking, so God can punch your husband. And that hurts more. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> because, because when you when, when you fight your husband yourself, mm -hmm. you almost don't have any solution. But when God does it, He can't blame you for it, and He He has so so. That's why our, our faith has helped us a lot because there are times when I would like. Do something that would hurt, hurt her and while we try to discuss we don't really come to a solution and she just goes and pray, prays about it and before you know it I feel so bad and I have to go to her and apologize not not because she told me to no because I prayed but because I had a conviction in my heart that what I was doing was not right and I had to apologize which didn't come very natural to me and I had to go out there and do it and, and that's one thing that's very important. Also forgiveness. Oh my goodness. Forgiveness is also very important when it comes to conflict. Oh yeah. Because you're going to hurt each other over and over again. Hopefully not every day. But somebody's going to do something to upset you. Because you're, you're different people. You, you're used to doing things differently from, from, from the beginning. Yeah. Apart from the, from the fact that you guys come from a different culture. You also come from different families. Mm -hmm. And you bring your own baggage. Mm -hmm. Everybody brings their baggage. It's true. To the, to the relationship. So forgiveness, you learn what it means to forgive 70, 70, 70 times 7. Like the Bible says, like I don't even know how to explain it, but you learn how to forgive over Constantly. and over and over yeah. and over again and not to keep stuff in your heart. And when I say forgive, I don't mean... Um, forgive one day and the other day. <laughs> and then just, use, it, use it against the person yeah, and exactly. say, yeah, Two, two days ago you did this, I, I remember, three days ago you did this, like you didn't really forgive, like mm. forgive will, will mean to erase that part, that when the person makes a new mistake, you actually address that mistake as if it was the first one. Or the same mistake as uh, if it was yeah, the first I, I, one. Yeah, as if it was the first one, and not try yeah. to recollect the previous ones like that you've stored, yeah. you know, somewhere in the bank, and saved it for a special time when you won't explode, you know. Yeah. And so that's also very, very important. Yeah, you shouldn't keep a list. Like, I think I can talk about a woman's kind of view. I think we women tend to have like this list of what our husbands did wrong and what they didn't do right oh, yeah. and things like this. Because women never you... forget. <laughs> yeah, we have the tendency and um, like things like this. And I think that's, that's where 
my faith um, really helped me because it, my culture different, like my culture is telling me to control and to, you know, punish him and to be over, like to, to be the woman and, you know, be stronger than him and, you know, that all that kind of feminism thing that is partly okay, but a lot of, like, let's say 80% out of it is not good. 80% is just over the top because it's just damaging a lot of relationships. relationships and marriages because of that cultural, you know, feminism movement that we have going on right now. So, um, like, yeah, um, I will learn to really not um, hold these things against him and really learn to really be um, be forgiving and teachable in a lot of things. Like, there were times I didn't even know how to address things and I would just tell God and just, you know, pray about it and say, I don't know how to do this. Like, I have no idea how to talk with him about this. And the next day he would come up to me without even talking to him and he would address these things and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> like, I didn't even talk to him about these things. So, like, I learned to really trust and rely on God yeah. and to write sometimes things down that can help you as well. Mm -hmm. So to really do that, um, but not talk badly about your husband um, to your parents or with, I don't know, with somebody family else, with family or members friends. or friends. That's something I learned. I would never go to somebody else. Like, I would really deal with it in my home, with myself, with my husband. Um, and when we dealt with it, it was done, it was finished, we love each other and then everything. Even through conflicts, we love each other. Like, it's not like, we never That's really a, had a conflict where we were throwing things and get really aggressive now. Hopefully we don't get there. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but the thing is, it's a, it's a very important topic that she just raised, or an, a very important point. There are a lot of people that, like, that we know, or people that are here in this part of the world, that are so used to talking about their husbands or their wives to other people. Yeah. Because they think the solution will come from there, you know. So you take all the issues to, to, to other people and then they, those people try to give you um, comfort, advice or comfort that actually doesn't, doesn't help your marriage but destroys it. Yes, exactly. Because they're your friends and, and so automatically they, they will take your side. And so they begin without to, even yeah, knowing the we, other without, side. without knowing, knowing the other side. So, yeah. and especially for the woman, like your friends will take your side before they take your husband's side because mm -hmm. women like to team together when it comes to those things. And they might be saying things about your husband or like pla planting seeds that will destroy your marriage without you even knowing it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think that it's a bad thing to go for counseling when you have so much conflict, but it should be. It shouldn't be you just going to one person. It should be both of you going to the, going same, to the same person and then talking with one. So that person, person, so that person, can get the point of view from both sides. Like like you said, neutral. Not your father, not your mother, not your friend. Somebody neutral. Hopefully a professional yeah. or a minister that can actually counsel you guys in the right way. A real counselor. A that real is, counselor. Yeah. yeah, that can hear both point of views and address it. Yeah. Um, Let's get back to the personal point of view. When I get angry or when I get upset about something, I go really quiet. <laughs> because I don't, really, I don't really know what to say at that point in time. Maybe it's the introvert in me. But also, I don't want to say something that I, that I will regret mm. at that point in time. And she doesn't like it. And at the beginning, she, it was hard for her to understand why, why I would go quiet. Because she felt like I was ignoring her. And I wasn't giving her attention and she wanted to address it. And I didn't understand it simply. She okay. didn't understand it. And um, and even now I'm trying to balance it. Because like I said, like you can't just say my personality is completely right. Mm. So now I'm trying to balance and say, okay, maybe I'm being too quiet. Maybe I need to balance and say, okay, be quiet for this time and then talk for this time. Now, no. for her, at the beginning, when she's angry, she would go really rude and emotional like she would go really rude emotional and loud and and she wanted to address it at that point in time but as we as we progress in the marriage yeah she's learning to wait 
and to become a bit quieter and so we're trying to adjust. I'm actually becoming more like him. <laughs> <In a lot laughs> of ways. Sometimes she actually gets way more introvert, yes. way more introverted than me, and it scares me. I'm like, what? What is going on with you? He, he wants to have a discussion. I'm Let's like, talk about this, and she's like, no, I don't. I'm like, what just happened? Did we just switch places? Like, how did you become even quieter than me? Like, yes. how is it possible that I'm the one that wants to talk about it, and you're the one that's like going to the room to just. Take a nap or something like that, you know. Like when 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 the when the argument gets so tough, she just like I can't do this. She just stands up and just walks away, you know, <laughs> and goes to have like her alone time. Something that she stole from me. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, so there's there is there is a tendency that the personalities will change. Oh yeah. As you get married. Oh yeah. When you think I'm the quiet one, because He's you're twenty four seven you together, and you learn from each other, so that's that's just really normal that you adapt to one another and that you copy things and you get you know you get some things out of his personality, and you're just like okay, I mean if it worked for him, it will work for me too. Yeah. So, but like I think that helped us, and I I learned, and I'm happy because I learned really to sometimes fall asleep even when we didn't say sorry like that that phrase i would hear that every single time when i was younger yeah you need to say sorry before you go to bed when you have a conflict never go go to bed angry never, never go, go to, to bed, bed angry, angry. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> that is that can happen in a marriage that can happen good luck and and sometimes it's even necessary that you sleep over it yeah next day everything will look so different mm -hmm. you will ask you, you you will ask yourself why was that why was I angry again why did I start this discussion I don't even understand so weird like things like this would come up after you know one night sleeping a good time of rest and I learned that I learned that sometimes that is what is needed. Sometimes it's not needed. Sometimes it's small things where you can actually apologize to one another at the same time and say, hey, you know what? I think it's just rubbish that we started this conversation. Like, I don't even know why we started it. I'm really sorry. Like, I don't even know. That 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 is not leading to anything. It's just causing problems. And that is also something that I'm really good at. Saying things and out of my personality because out of that control kind of culture thing <laughs> that I had or yeah I'm gonna speak it out that I had I'm really working on it right now where I would address things that are just so not necessary like things like why did you do this why didn't you clean up or put the th the stuff at the in the right cupboards why did you I don't know did, didn't you put the toilet stuff away? Why did you put this there or that there? And like little things like this without even saying, hi, how are you? Are you feeling good? Thank you for cleaning up. <laughs> I would come home and just be annoyed about little things because I didn't do it myself and I felt like I needed to control it mm -hmm. and it went really south sideways. Yeah. Really, really fast, and that's when I learned to really say, "Okay, I'm thankful that he does something. I'm thankful, like I don't take it for granted that he actually cleans up and that he actually helps me with the household and that he, you know, that he does these things because not everybody does that. So I had to learn and to really think about it constantly and remind myself that this is not something I should take take for granted, and the more. I will be annoyed about little things like this the more it is destructive to the marriage to the marriage so it's very important that you that you show that you have a grateful attitude to your spouse or your partner mm. that you say thank you for the little things or the big things even even if they, they didn't do it as perfectly as you want it as you wanted them to do it the fact that they actually did it and they did it just for you, just to make sure that you, you don't have to do it and to support the marriage or the relationship that we are grateful towards each other because a grateful spirit deals with a lot of conflicts.
Like mm -hmm. almost half of it, half of the complex is dealt with mm -hmm. when, we, when we have this, um, this gratitude. gratitude, this grateful towards spirit each other, each yeah. other, towards each other. And, um, and secondly, like I said, I'm sorry. Like when you do something, something wrong, be you able to say I'm sorry, it helps a lot to, mm -hmm. to um, it cuts a lot of arguments and a lot of conflicts at the root before it becomes something else. Now thirdly, which is very, very important and crucial, we need to understand what the woman needs and what the man needs. For example, men crave a lot of respect. Oh yeah. Women also need to be respected, but men, men crave it more. And so if a man feels disrespected, it's the beginning of conflict. Mm. If a woman feels like she's not being loved and she's not being appreciated, she's not being taken care of, it's the beginning of conflict. And so when you have a conflict, you have to watch out for these two things. That the woman, although she's angry, doesn't automatically begin to disrespect the husband. Because men take disrespect very seriously. Like way more than women. Like they are so crazy about respect that any act of disrespect is interpreted to be that you don't love them. Mm. So they automatically see respect as love. And women see care and, and uh, appreciation and listening to them and complimenting them as love. Mm. So now that's how we translate it because we are two different people. Apart from the fact that we have two different personalities, we are two different genders. Yeah. Man and woman also completely different. And so, in conflict, let's have that in mind. That men crave respect. And women crave attention and love. And of course men need attention, but not as much. They don't crave it as much as women do. Mm. So I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't respect your wife. And I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't give your man or your husband attention. I'm saying respect for a man it's is the first. the first on the list. Yeah. And attention and care and appreciation for the woman the first. is the first in the list. So when you have a conflict, you have to be careful that you don't touch those two things. Otherwise, it will spark a fire yeah. that will create a conflict mm -hmm. that was not supposed to be so big. That can big. explode like within some moments, which is really crazy. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's really, really important to have that in mind too. To know, okay, hey when to respect and how you actually talk with your husband and which tone and I think we women are really good like I, I, I can talk about my perspective I had this tone as he already mentioned that I would get really rude like the way I would talk and I learned fastly that this causes that he doesn't feel respected like the way I would talk to him not just in my home but also outside it would cause conflicts um, and that's something that I that we learned and I think there's something really simple one last point a really simple point is always make sure you're not hungry <laughs> just just don't be hungry if you have a conversation we learned that really fast in our, in our relationship when we were dating actually oh my god sometimes <laughs> the solution is just chicken nuggets some fries, some burgers, some milkshake, some food. Because sometimes <laughs> you're angry because of chemicals in your body. It's not really the problem. You're angry that the that the. You're just hungry. You're that, angry. You're angry that there's a dirty that, that there's a dirty plate on the table. It's not really a big of a deal, but you're hungry, so it just amplifies the whole thing. So, what's the solution again? Eat. Go to McDonald's if you need to. Go to McDonald's. Probably go to, go to somewhere King. healthier. But please we don't go wanna, to something healthy. We don't want to. We don't want to advertise but fast King, food. Fast food and stuff. Go and have a banana. Have a salad. Have a salad with chicken. <laughs> and if the and if the if the issue is not solved, then go to Burger King or McDonald's. <laughs> if you need some fat stuff, but that really it does help. It, it sounds really ridiculous. Really true. But it, it does help. And you know, there's this one thing people would say, um, a way to man's heart is it's through food. his stomach. It's through his stomach. So women, cook some good food <laughs> <laughs> if, first if you don't and have, then have a discussion. <laughs> if you don't know how to cook, then buy something good. Just feed him. Uh, thank God I can cook. <laughs> and man, if you feel your, your wife is hungry, 
Also buy her something to eat. Oh, you better because do that. Because when a woman is hungry, my goodness. People think yeah, when a man is, people think when a man is, is is hungry, there's like fire in the house. But when a woman is hungry, oh my goodness. She's like a lion. She's worse than a lion. <laughs> just find that I'm like, honey, have you eaten today? And she's like, no, I don't want to eat. Just go buy something. Don't <laughs> listen to her. She's like, I'm not hungry. Just buy it. And just begin to eat it in front of her. And then ask her, are you sure you don't want to eat? Then she's going to join you. And she, I, I promise you, she's going to eat more than you. So buy like a secret burger somewhere and hide it. In case the one you bought is not enough for the, for the both of you. Yeah. Just food. Food is very important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's all for today. That's all what we want to share. Um, We're going to definitely be more up to date with our... We'll try. Vlogs and blogs. We try. As we told, we have some news that we're going to share. A very news. special news and we'll share that with you soon. In a couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, we're excited. Let us leave some comments down below. And um, check out our last videos, the previous videos that we had. If you haven't subscribed. Subscribe. subscribe. And if you have any... Hit the like button. <laughs> if you have any suggestions or if you want to share how you, how you handle conflicts in yeah, your marriages or share whatever. Share that, write us. And just comment and also email us and whatever. Yeah. Just, we we'll like to stay in contact. Yeah. We also want to thank you for everybody and everyone that has... Um, who wrote actually, us. Who wrote us and who contacted us through email and on our side as well, which is... We really appreciate that. I really love all the emails that we got and really the um, conversations that we... That we had. That we had. And we and we're, not, we're not able to reply to every email on time or so please forgive us if you're not able to come to every email but we love to hear from you guys yeah. in the comment section or through email and just um, yeah let's stay connected yeah Have all right beautiful day weekend actually weekend today's a friday but have a wonderful be... weekend probably when you see this video it's gonna be week have a beautiful week or weekend whatever <laughs> whatever time you guys <laughs> bye bye, -bye.